Okay, uh, so let's start our lab so, so that in this lab we are going to try the decision tree model, uh, the random forest model, and the gradient boosted tree models. So we are going to try those three types of tree models. And we are also going to try the cross validation so that how can we uh, see how can um, assess the performance of the models. So in, instead of using a split test. So first, uh, let's download the data. So the data is on my GitHub repository. So um, we're going to use a house price label. And let's download the data. So by default, it will go to my uh, downloads folder. Uh, next, let's open uh, Rapid Miner and let's create a new folder um, and our class. So let's call it, and this is lab 8. Okay, and first let's import the data. So it's in my computer, uh, my downloads. Okay, so let's import that Excel file. And let's just save it house price label. And that is data, so we have the house types uh, and also year the house being built, or I call it a house age, which is not that accurate. <laughs> and also the price of the house. Okay. Uh, so let's bring the data to our process, and 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 to make uh, the lab too easier. So let's just uh, select three attributes. So let's say uh, we're going to predict the house type again based on the price and also the house the year that house being built. Okay. So it's, it's a very simple uh, model. Uh, by using this entries, actually you can try all the other attributes, all the, all the other features, but just to simplify the model, let's just use those two uh, features um, to predict the house type. And let's also set the rows. So let's tell uh, right minor, okay, so the price of the house type is our label. Okay, and let's see how it looks like. So now um, we are going to predict the house type based on the house being built and also the price. Uh, so if we look at the data, we all see that normally that the house built in recent years and also less expensive will be a landlord, townhouse, or, or the condo. If the house is built, um, Okay, so if the house is built, uh, is old and also, uh, but and also more expensive, so it is high likely to be a single family home. Okay, so that is our data. So next, uh, so we can bring our model. So but before we bring the model, you can see here the cross validation is is already here. So that is uh, one of the recommended operators. So you can drag cross validation from those recommended operators. Or you can just simply search cross validation, and you can see cross validation is here. Okay, uh, so now if you check the cross validations, uh, you can see that if we need double, if we need double click, and we need to go inside of this cross validation. Okay, and to specify the the training models and also. Uh, and ask how do you want to perform and uh, perform the test. Uh, if we go outside of the cross validations, and you can see that the number of folds do you want to create, okay, or five or ten, etc. So let's use the default one. And how do you want to split the data? So again, you can choose shuffled, or you can choose uh, stratified. If you choose automatic, so they will decide either using shuffled or stratified based on the label. Okay, um, you can also try enable the parallel execution because cross validation requires a relatively longer running time. So let's say that we are going to um, build a decision tree model. So let's say we uh, search uh, decision tree. And here you can see in the tree models, we had decision tree, random forest, and also 
gradient boosted trees. So let's drag decision tree model here. Uh, we are going to use the training data. So this is very similar to the split test, split validation, but it is cross validation because we are going to do 10 times of the uh, validation. So we pass a model uh, to the testing part and we apply the model. So we have the model and also apply that one to the test data. Uh, so we always get result accuracy on the testing data. And we let's see performance. So because we are doing classification, so here let's drag performance for classification and we pass predict result and we connect the performance to the performance um, portal port. And let's also check kappa. Okay, kappa and accuracy. Okay, so um, that thing, uh, so that is for the uh, testing part. Uh, if we click the decision trees, and here you can see that here we can choose different type of the criteria to evaluate the quality of the questions. Um, so let's let's use the default one, and we can see that most most users are using gain ratio. So let's use default one. Uh, maximal depths, uh, you can see most people prefer um, more than 20 depths. So here, let's say we want the five depths. OK, so let's build a very um, a slightly uh, simple decision tree model. OK, and also there are a lot of the other parameters that you can select, like the leaf size, etc. And let's go outside of cross validation. So for the uh, for the final result, let's say we want to see the model and we also want to see the performance. Okay, remember that we will run this one 10 times, uh, so we will actually uh, try 10 times of the decision trees. Uh, so let's run it. Okay, so here we can see that uh, the accuracy is 80%. Uh, and within the range, so minus or plus 3.7%. So the accuracy is pretty high, and I would say it's, it's pretty stable. So this is very not, it's not big. Uh, however, the car price is very, very, is, uh, is very low, so 0.3. Okay, so that is not, not a very good kappa. Uh, let's look at the tree models. So here you see, because we said that the step is um, five steps, so that you can see price, the ask the first question, and and the second question is based on the year that has been built, and also if that is less than this price, and also after that year, it is a land or lot. Otherwise, it will be a single family home. And if that is greater than this price, and then the second question is that when that house been built, and if that is after 2017, it is a condo. Otherwise, it will ask another question about that when that uh, house been built, is that before or after that year? And if that before that year, it is highly likely a, a single family home. If not, so that will ask the, the final question that the price. Um, and here you can see if that greater than the price, it's highly likely a single family home. Otherwise, it is highly likely a condo. Okay, so that is a, it's, this is the visualization of the decision tree. Uh, again, I think it's, it's pretty easy to understand or interpret the decision tree models. And now we can see the accuracy is okay, but kappa is pretty low. Let's go back to the model and let's see here we want to build a more complicated model. Let's say we want the maximum depth to be 10. Okay. And now let's run it. And now we can see the accuracy is increased a little bit, um, but still it's pretty stable. Uh, the kappa uh, also has been increased. It's point, almost 0. 0.5. Okay. And also, uh, it's also relatively stable. And if you look at the tree models, so now you can see we have more questions. Okay, the first question is still the price built in, um, and the price and built in. 
Uh, you can see that as long as we are asking more questions, the answer will be more we will be more confident about the answer. So for example, for this one, we can see majority of the houses uh, following those questions. Majority of the houses are single family home. OK. And for this one, so after those, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven questions. Now we can see, OK, majority of the houses are condos. OK, so the more questions we ask, the high accurate the model will be but normally it will be more um overfit but here we can see okay th this this is fine so i i would say that's fine okay in terms of accuracy okay so that is decision tree models so now let's say we want to replace this model with a, another model so let's see tree models so let's say we want to use a random forest model so let's disable decision trees and here let's use the random forest and for this our random forest let's say the maximal depth is 10 and we are going to build 100 of those decision trees of those tree models and we will try 10 of those random forest models so that means that the, uh, um, the it will be very in, a relatively intensive computation. Okay, and let's see how that will go. Okay, uh, it, it's still uh, super fast, and we can see that accuracy is also uh, okay, and also um, uh, we can see that the it's also pretty stable, and the kappa. Is relatively the same as the decision trees. Um, okay, uh, so there's no big difference in terms of the in this case. So in terms of decision tree and also random forest. However, if you look at models, and you can see that there are a lot of models. Okay, because we have 100 trees, we have 100 tree models, and each model are slightly different. And the final output will be the aggregated or the average accuracy or the average cup. Okay, so that is a random forest. And next, let's try the gradient um, boosted trees. So let's un disable that one and let's enable the gradient boosted trees. And here, let's see that the, the let's also. Um, number of trees so let's say we want 20 and also maximum depth let's say five okay and now let's run it so this will be uh, also is pretty faster uh, here you can see in terms of kappa actually it's it's probably the best one so and also um, uh, and also most the stable one the stablest i would say in terms of kappa um, and if you look at the green boosted trees, and you can see it essentially actually a, a bunch of the weak models because the trees are very shallow, so a few steps. Um, however, so each single tree will try to correct the result of the previous trees. Okay, so that is the green dent boosted trees. So in this case, I not personally, I, I would use this gradient boosted trees um, because the kappa is the high, highest, and also um, you can you can see it's it's also pretty stable. So okay, so I would say the winner will be the gradient boosted trees. And actually, um, random forest and also gradient boosted trees are very actually super powerful. And so if you are interested, you can actually try to include more attributes so that to to provide more features uh, for those tree models. So for example, if we bring the area, bathrooms, bedrooms, and also lot sites, we don't bring this one because this one is uh, provide a similar information as our labels because it's single mean that is that single family or not. So that we are highly correlated with the house type. So 
So let's bring all the other attributes here. And we are still using the host type as our labels. And now let's try to use different uh, tree models. So first, let's see. Uh, here we want to use a decision trees. So let's say we keep the depth as 10. And now you can see that kappa and also accuracy has been increased. OK, especially kappa has increased a lot. It's 0 0.6, uh, almost 0.67. OK, and but if you look at the trees, uh, now you can see they will ask a lot of questions like instead of the uh, price and also years that have been built. So um, they will ask like the area, what's the size of the house, on, on, and also number of the bedrooms and also bathrooms, etc. So that will help the model to to have more questions to answer, to more different type of questions ask, to, ans and to ask, and to find out the better result. And if we compare that one to random forest, Okay, and you can see it's the accuracy is even higher. Okay, and also kappa is 0.7, so it's higher than the uh, a single decision tree, and also it's um, it's more stable because this one is smaller. So that is just a bunch of different decision trees. Okay, uh, so that makes the model be be uh, more powerful. And finally, let's try the gradient. Boosted, boosted trees. So going into the boosted trees um, uh, model is a winner in many machine learning model computations. So let's see how that works. And actually, you can see the maximum depth is five. So it's it's uh, each single tree is a um, is a little bit um, simple model. So a weak tree model. Um, However, so each tree model will try to correct errors of the previous model. Now let's run it. Okay, so here you can see that the kappa is is pretty high. Okay, 0.75. However, this value also higher than the is higher than the random forest. If you remember that one, that one is less than 0.1. So that means it's it's a little bit unstable. Uh, but it did give you higher accuracy, so the highest accuracy uh, so far we have. Okay. Uh, 